So before we start, this is 6.2 using natural logarithms to solve exponential equations with base e, where the other one was just using logarithms to solve exponential equations. Everything we do in this video is going to be the same, except we're talking about the natural logarithm, the natural logarithm versus the logarithm of whatever base. Okay. Now remember, if I wrote logarithm without a base, it's assumed to be logarithm base 10, assumed. So these are equivalent, log 10 equals y. This is the same as this. When I don't write the 10, it's assumed to be 10. And all that logarithm, natural logarithm is, is it's logarithm base e. So remember when we're solving these continuously uh, continuously compounded interest problems. For instance, when I had some uh, some end amount, my initial uh, investment, which is my principal, equals or times e to the rt. This e was the Euler's constant, 2.71, blah 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 blah, irrational number. And so I'm just having a logarithm with base e. So if I had, for instance, if I asked you, for instance, what's the logarithm? base e of e squared, well that's what exponent must I place on an e, what exponent must I place on e for it to equal e squared? Well of course that's 2. So this expression is 2. So I've just changed the base to e and how would we write that instead is natural logarithm of e squared, of course that's equal to 2 as I just said or just walked through. So. Um, that's the only thing that's different is we're talking about a logarithm of base e. We're lazy mathematicians and don't want to write all that stuff. And this this particular logarithm comes up so frequently that we'd rather just write it natural log. And we don't have to have e here. It could be 7.352. And, of course, that's just some number and we put it in our calculator. And luckily, or maybe not luckily, because this natural logarithm comes up so often naturally, we have... Uh, a natural logarithm button. So for instance, if I had said uh, the natural logarithm of e, what did I say, squared? And that should be 2. So when I hit enter, we'll get the number 2. Okay? So keep in mind, as we go through all the properties, everything is exactly the same. This statement is the equivalent to, to this statement. This is the logarithmic form versus the exponential form. And we can go back and forth between the two. And the numbers are the same. So this C in here is the same C over here. This X over here is the same X over here. And remember, natural log means I have a base. The base of my power is E. So here it is. The base of my power is E. Here are our rules or shortcuts to logarithms. And these are the ones we went over previously log a times b equals log of a, log of a plus log of b. Log of a divided by b is equal to the logarithm of a minus the logarithm of b. The logarithm of, logarithm of a to the p equals p times the logarithm of a. Remember, I can write the exponent as a coefficient in front of the logarithm. And log of 1 is equal to 0, since 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. Now, all of that still applies in the exact same way. It's just we're talking about a different base. So for instance, if logarithm, this is just a single example, logarithm base 10 of a times b is equal to logarithm base 10 of a plus logarithm base 10 of b, well, that goes to say that the logarithm of any base, a times b, is going to be equal to the logarithm that same base of a plus the logarithm of that same base b. So if that's the case, then the logarithm base e of a times b is equal to the logarithm base e of a plus logarithm base e of b, which means that the natural logarithm, because we don't write it as log base e, then all of this is true. Oops. OK. And if you move on to higher level math, then you'll see that we end up using the natural logarithm even more frequently than the common logarithm log base 10. So the rules or the shortcuts, whatever you want to call them, are exactly the same as any other logarithm. It's just that it's worked with a different base. So let's move on to some examples. So for instance, the 
exa this first example here is expanding expressions with natural logarithms. So if I have an, the expression, the natural logarithm of the square root of x plus 3 divided by x minus 2, this might be somewhat, it may cause some anxiety, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this square root, not as a square root, because again, we want to get more comfortable and it's much more easy to see what's going on here. If I write this as an exponent rather than a square root symbol. So recall that square root is written as an exponent of 1 half, meaning the square root of 3 is equal to 3 to the 1 half. So if I can do that, then I can write this in this manner. And then I can use the third, if you're numbering the rules in your head, the third rule that this exponent can be written as a coefficient in front of my logarithm. So I have 1 half times the natural log of x plus 3 over x minus 2. And of course, since I'm dividing the argument, the natural logarithm can be split up into the difference of the two arguments, or to the difference of the numerator and denominator of the arguments. So the natural logarithm of x plus 3 minus the natural logarithm of x minus 2. Okay? So that's this example, 2. Now, so they come up with the same thing. Be careful with your parentheses. Now, example 2. Contracting expressions. So now I'm squishing it into together so that I only have a single logarithm. So these are the same exercises that we just did. You'll do a bunch of these in um, the assignment that I give you because we need to be comfortable with these. Uh, x plus 1. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this coefficient as an exponent on this uh, argument. And I'll do the same thing here. This will be an exponent. So I have the natural log of x minus 1, the quantity cubed, I'm sorry, to the 1 third, plus the natural logarithm of x plus 1 raised to the 1 third. And now I can, this is plus, so it's actually the product of these two numbers are these two arguments, x minus 1 and x plus 1. So I get natural log of x minus 1 to the 1 third and x minus, excuse me, x plus 1 to the 1 third. Now I would tell you that I would be okay if you stop there. I'm certain that the book has not stopped there um, because I can raise all of this to the 1 third. If this is being multiplied, or excuse me, this is being raised to the one third and this is being raised to the one third, that's the same as these two individual items being raised to the one third. And so how can I rewrite this one third? Well, we'll do that in a second. X minus one times X plus one. If I distribute that or do foil or however you want to think about it, that becomes X squared minus one, the difference of squares. And so I can leave it like that or I can write it like this. It's the cube root of X squared minus one. But again, I'd be okay if you stopped here. And they're going to get to that as well. Okay? Now, um, they had an original equation up here in their discussion. Oh, they get, yeah, up in here. Okay? So we're just, they're going to give us that uh, equation and we're going to solve it. So just like in the last section, we learned how to solve with logarithms. We're going to do the same thing here, except we're just going to be using the natural logarithm. And you'll see that it's not significantly, not significantly different. So we're going to solve this equation for t. In other words, I want t equals whatever left over here. So how would I do that? So I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. Okay, The natural logarithm of both sides. And so the natural logarithm of 10 is just some number. The natural logarithm of e to the t. But I'm going to write t as a coefficient in front of this natural logarithm. So it becomes natural logarithm of 10 equals t natural logarithm of e. But what is the natural logarithm of e? So remember, it's asking this question. If I write the natural logarithm as a log, maybe it's easier to see. Remember, it's log base e, right? So if I, take the, if I ask the question, what exponent must I raise on this e, this one here, in order for it to be equal to e to the 1, well, I see that that's actually 1. So log base e of e, which is also the natural log of e, is equal to 1. So this is the number 1. 
So I'm actually get I actually get t equals natural log of 10, and I can either leave it like that, which I prefer, but some would want you to stick that in a calculator, and so I get natural log of 10. And the reason I prefer it is because it's going to be an irrational number, and I'd rather leave it as natural log of 10 instead of rounding it to 2.3. But that's me. 2.303. Okay. Effective rates versus nominal rates. Now we've already done some work with related to this. There was a, a, some some homework problems with it, some practice problems related with it. So if the effective rate of annual interest if the effective annual interest rate on an account is 5.21%, estimate the nominal annual interest rate that is compounded continuously. To do this, we got to think about um, if this is the effective annual interest rate, really I'm talking about 5.21%, but we want to represent it as a decimal, so 0 0.0521. And so um, I get an equation that looks sort of like this. A, my final amount, times the principal, and if I'm in, um, this is an investment, so this is additional interest that's, or interest that's being earned. So I'm going to keep all of it plus 0.0521% of it for every T or X. Okay? I guess we're used to using T up here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if I want to change, if I want to determine what the nominal interest is for continuous compounding, right? continuously compounding, I'm looking for the equation that looks like this, and I'm looking for this r. So I have to convert this to this, which means I have to say, when I have a number that looks like this, what is, t, what is r equal to if I want it to look like that? So I have to solve for r in this particular case. How would I do that? Well, again, you can see that this looks very much like what we had up here. Some number equals, where are we at? Some number equals e to the something. Who cares if the number is 10 or 75, or in this case, 1.0521. I have some number equal to e to the exponent, and I'm trying to find this exponential, va this exponent value that's on my e. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. I'm going to rewrite r as a coefficient in front of the natural log. So now it looks like this, r to the natural log of e. Remember, what's the natural log of e? It's 1. So I get r is equal to the natural log of 1.0521. Now, in this particular instance, since they really want us to compare the nominal interest rate versus this annual effective interest rate, then I want to convert this into just some decimal value, not leave it in the natural log form. So I'm going to pull up my calculator and just type that out. So I'm going to say natural log of 1.0521. And I get R, the interest rate, is equal to 0 0.0507. Okay? Now, does that make sense? This number should be smaller than this one. Why? Because compounding continuously, continuously grows faster. So, so that they grow at the same rate, I have to reduce the R value associated with my base of E. These are the exact same formulas if you were to graph them out. See what the book says. And I get the same thing here, 0 0.0508. I round, I rounded poorly, right? There we go. So what did I get on my calculator? Yeah, I rounded poorly, sorry. <clears throat> In haste, thinking of too many things at once, all right? So now we're going to examine natural log with doubling times and half lives. Does it seem very similar, similar to, the, to the work that we just did in the other section and work that we've done before? It's just we didn't have a tool to find out. Uh, but you had some practice in some videos that you watched from somebody else. So as the height above sea level increases, the atmospheric pressure continuously decreases at a rate of about 12% per 1,000 meters. So as the height above sea level increases, the atmospheric pressure continuously decreases. So there's that word continuously. So I'm talking about an ERT, right? So continuously decreases at a rate of about 12% per 1,000 meters. Um, the atmospheric pressure is measured in atmospheres where one atmosphere is equal to 15 pounds per inches squared, the pressure at sea level.
So since we're compounding continuously, I have, let's call it uh, pressure is equal to initial pressure, I don't know, times e to the rt. But now we know that e to the rt, r is negative 0.12. Uh, I guess I'm going to use t. Don't, you don't have to use t. They probably don't use t. They probably use x. So that's part A. Um, and then part B asks, well, what's the pressure? What would the height be? I guess maybe we should use the depth different from T, but maybe D for depth or something like that. Let's do that. D for depth. D for depth. So at what depth or what height would the atmospheric pressure be half at sea level? So half of so if it's sea level, let's call that the datum. That's one. For it, for it to be half of that, it would be half. You could put all kinds of numbers in there, 17, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're going to end up putting on some initial amount. Let's say I don't know what it is, so let's call it 100. It doesn't matter because we're going to get, um, this is going to be half. So that's 50 if I divide by 100. So hopefully you've seen with the other problems, it doesn't matter what I start out with. So I don't really need to know the exact measure or the pressure at sea level, even though we're given it. We could have put 15 in there and divide it, and that would end up being seven and a half. Divide by 15, we'll still get this half, okay? So how do I solve for D? Um, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Then I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent in front of my natural log. And so I get natural log of 1 half equals negative 0.12d natural log of e. But again, remember, what is the natural log of e equal to? That's equal to 1. So I get natural log of 1 half equals negative 0.12d. If I'm solving for d, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0.12. And I get d is equal to some value. And so I get the natural log of 1 half, natural log of 0.5, divided by Oops, look at that. There we go. Make sure we close that. So divide it by, and I want to put parentheses as well, negative 0.12. And that looks right. So I'm going to get that, and I'm going to get the depth is 5.77. And that was uh, height, height, height. What are the units of height? Meters, thousands of meters. So it's 5.77 thousands of meters. So that's 5,770 meters. At 5,770 meters, the atmosphere is cut in half. Oh, it is height, not depth. I was reading this problem completely incorrectly with regard to, I was thinking, well, maybe I didn't even read it at all, or very well. Um, height, height, because it's height, it's the um, altitude. I was thinking depth, like we're going under, but I'm like, how's it cut in half? Because it doesn't. In, the pressure would increase if we, was going, if we were going below the surface of the water. It's decreasing as we rise in our atmosphere, like climbing a mountain or flying in a plane. So let's check our answer against their answer. And we get 5.8 thousand meters, which is 5,770 meters. All right? So example six now, doubling the duckweed. So example six, I'm, I know I'm moving fast, but remember, you can hit stop, pause, and rewind. The smallest flower in the world comes from the Wolfia plant. I have nothing, don't any, I don't know anything about it. The plant itself is the size of a green sprinkle on a St. Patrick's Day donut. Oh my goodness. Uh, is that, but a tardigrade is probably still smaller than it. It's a type of duckweed which you may have seen floating in clumps on a water's calm surface. The plant has a high growth rate, so it, it grows very quickly. So an equation that represents the plant's growth where T is in days and N is the number of plants is N of t is equal to n sub 0 e to the 0 0.556t, OK? So the question is, how long does it take for the duckweed to double? So let's say that n sub 0 is equal to, let's pick, pick 3, 2, 1, 5, 6. So if I'm looking for when the, the n sub 0 doubles, n of t is equal to six four three one two. So if I put six four three one two in for n of t, 
and three, two, one, five, six. Why did I choose these two numbers? Or actually this number, this one is generated by doubling this one. Why did I choose it? I'm trying to reiterate or prove to you that it doesn't matter what number I start out with in this type of problem. And that's why they don't tell us. They don't tell us because we should understand that. Um, that I'm always going to end up getting two over here. If it's decay, if I'm looking for half-life, it'll always come out to be one half when asked this problem. So I get, I'm left with, this equals one, I'm left with e to the 0.556t over here. And guess what? I'm going to use the natural log to solve, to, to solve this, the, my next step to solve this equation. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. I get the natural log of e to the 0.556t. But remember, I'm writing, I'm taking t and I'm writing it as a coefficient of the natural log. So I get natural log of t equals t times the natural log of e to the, oh, I'm sorry, I should leave the 0 0.056 over there. I'm writing this whole thing, not just the t, 0 0.556, because it is part of the exponent as well. Natural log of e, <clears throat> but the natural log of e is equal to 1. So this part is equal to 1. So I get the natural log of 2 equals 0 0.556 times 1. I forgot the t. There's t. So now I'm going to divide by 0 0.556. And I'm going to stick, stick that in my calculator very quickly. And I get natural log of 2 this time instead of 1 half because I'm doing a different problem. Divided by 0.556. And I get 1.25. And 1.25, what did that represent? The number of plants. The number of plants. Oh, so that's the number of time we went from, we doubled the number of plants we had. So it doesn't matter what we started out with. And it took us 1.25 days. So one and a quarter days. So what's that, 24 days and what, six more hours? So 30 hours. Okay, 1.25 days, which is 30 hours. Hey, I did that math correctly in my head. Woohoo!